my name is Marshall Ulrich, and I'm an ultra runner. I've done some mountaineering, the uh, Seven Summits, which is Everest, and the other mountains, highest mountains on each continent, uh, as well as an adventure racer. I've done some of that. I did all of the nine eco-challenges, which are the precursor, say, to Survivor. But my main focus is ultra running, and I've done probably about 127, 128 uh, ultras that average over 125 miles each. So I got into the eco challenges back in 1995. I just had some some guys just cold call me from um, you know here in Denver, and we put together a team. It was called Team Mile High, and I knew nothing about adventure racing, but what it is is multi-sport where you do paddling climbing, mountain biking, running, all sorts of things. And it sounded intriguing to me. And so I decided to go out and do the first Eco Challenge in 1995. So it was just totally uh, spontaneous, if you will, that I got into that sport. I was uh, into the ultra running and uh, went into the uh, adventure racing and then got into the uh, sport of uh, mountain climbing so you know it was a progression really of sports and I found that I like the diversity of doing something else other than just ultra running and of course the ultra running provided a good base for me to spring from so uh, you know you can use if you can do ultra running you can do just about anything it's just fine-tuning skills paddling skills climbing skills whatever so uh, that's, that's how I got into that and uh, diversified into other sports. So Badwater is a race out in Death Valley. Uh, the original race is 146 miles. They have shortened it where it ends at the portals because you can't go into the wilderness area to the top of Mount Whitney. But uh, recently I completed my 20th and of those 20, all of them are to the top. So I did the entire 146 miles. So once again, Years ago, back in 1990, I remember reading an article in Runner's World, and I thought to myself, I've got to go out and do this race, and it's held in July and August, and it goes from the Badwater Basin, which is minus 282 feet, and it goes to the top of Mount Whitney, which is 14,500 feet and change. So uh, normally it can be anywhere from 110 to close to 130 degrees, 128 I think is the hottest race that I ran. And uh, you know, I've just, I sort of made a brand for myself doing that race and uh, I've won it four times. That was back in the 90s and I just continued to do it. And I think my biggest emphasis is to tell people um, or show them that they can accomplish more than they think they can and keep doing it for as long as they can. I'm 64 years old, so obviously I've been doing it quite a while and I enjoy it. And um, if I can influence, you know, one or two people along the way and, um, you know, they are successful and happy with what they're doing as far as running is concerned, then, you know, that's what it's all about. So the book Running on Empty is about the, the main part of it, the meat of it, is about a run that I did from San Francisco to New York. It was 3,063 miles. And I did it in 52 days, so I was averaging just short of uh, 60 miles per day. Um, and then that was a tough thing to do. But that's what the book is about. And then, really, when you get down to the basics of it, it's a love story also between my wife and I. Uh, she kind of rescued me from... Uh, the depths of, I don't want to say depression, but uh, one of the reasons I actually started ultra running is to uh, overcome the loss of my first wife. And uh, I was, for a good decade, I was just uh, thrown for a loop and she sort of uh, helped me out of that. And so really, it's, it's a love story also. I'm writing a new book and it's called uh, Both Feet on the Ground. That's the working title. It'll probably come out this next spring and the basis or the, the, the point of that book is to put your gadgets away, reconnect with nature. And then a lot of people were kind of disappointed. I, I don't want to say disappointed with my first book, but they, they said they requested that I go into some of the other stories that uh, um, 
you know, I hadn't told about the adventure racing, say racing in Tibet or Vietnam or uh, Patagonia. And so I'll throw in that little stories, vin vignettes of uh, where I've been, what I've done. And uh, it's broken down into four parts, earth, uh, fire, wind, and air, the elements. And so obviously air, you know, I address Mount Everest and I go into um, the journal in Everest, which has never been published. And so I'll touch upon that. Fire, of course, is Death Valley and so on and so forth. You know, I think one of my biggest achievements is running across the United States. It was very difficult running that 60 miles per day. Uh, and the hardest thing was mentally every day I get up and I think to myself, I've got to go out and get out the door and uh, run 60 miles today and the day after and the day after and the day after. So it was really a physical and a mental game. I think the most dangerous thing that I did was uh, not climbing Mount Everest, although that was very difficult, but the most dangerous thing that I did was about three years ago along with a buddy, Dave Heckman, him and I went out a couple of months in advance in May and buried 52 caches around the exterior in the, uh, the border of Death Valley. And uh, we went around the circumference of Death Valley, which is 425 degrees in July and August, and uh, did the first circumnavigation of Death Valley. And it was super hot. Uh, we relied on the caches where we bur buried water, so we were totally self-sufficient. We didn't know if we could pull it off, but we did. But that was certainly the most dangerous. And in fact, uh, climbing out of the Saline Valley, we went up a mile and a half and 5,000 feet. And we ran out of water, and we still had about five or six miles to go. And I almost bought it there. Um, I was very drowsy, drifting in and out of consciousness. And um, you know, it was, it was one of those things that uh, you I wouldn't recommend it to everybody to do. <laughs> well, what's next for me, uh, I, I may be out in Death Valley still, uh, but I think I'm gonna be out there on a limited basis, you know, 20 times of doing uh, the Badwater Ultra Marathon, and then another seven crossings in one way or another, one fashion or another, I think that's enough. Uh, I'm gonna get more into the winter sports, and I think the ultimate goal for me is to finish races and. Uh, qualified to do uh, the entire thousand mile. I did a rod course on, on foot pulling a sled and uh, it's called the I did a sport. So, you know, that'll be the next challenge and I'll probably build up to that in the next couple of years and uh, just a uh, change of scenery, if you will. Well, I think if I were to offer advice to uh, somebody who's out there doing any sort of a challenge uh, physically, is to listen to their body. Uh, it will tell you what it needs to eat. Uh, it will tell you when it needs to rest. It will tell you when you're injured. And I think if you're smart about it, you won't push the limits. I, I, you know, you won't do anything really silly or stupid that uh, you'll actually listen to your body. Uh, it will tell you everything you need to know and it's just fine tuning and just intuitively tuning into what it is you need uh, to learn to accomplish uh, what it is you want to do. Well, they can go on my website. It's just uh, my name. It's www.marshallulrich.com. And, uh, you know, they can pick up on the books and just see what I'm doing. I don't do a lot of blogging, but of course, they can look up my name on Facebook also. It's just, you know, Marshall Ulrich. And, uh, you know, from, uh, it'll probably pop up as Denver, Colorado, and that's a good way to follow me. I do post on there fairly frequently.